explain. You, um, you created, if, you, if people have listened to episode two, they know the full story. Uh, we won't go the full story again this time, but your claim to fame, the, the, what episode two is about is telling the story of how you created a soap opera um, content site, like a, a soap opera uh, website that was basically just saying, hey, you're watching Days of Our Lives or you're watching, uh, you know, I don't know, The Young and the Restless. Um, here's the recap. Here's the spoilers of what's coming next. So you kind of built like a spoiler site for daytime soap operas. Like who the heck thinks of that? And then you ended up selling it for nine or $10 million cash. And that's like an amazing, amazing exit. And this is from a guy who has never watched a soap opera episode in his life. So I think people love that because it was so A, random, but B, interesting and relatable how, how you did that. And it sounds like one of the ways you were getting business ideas was you were going on these websites and you I think you had told me at the time, you're like, I saw a website for sale that was also in the daytime TV niche that was like $100,000 for sale. And you were like, cool, like I don't have $100,000, but if this is worth $100,000, maybe I could make something like this. And then you went through this process where you said, okay, how can I test these ideas? Because uh, when I met you, you, I was like, all right, what's your passion? Uh, you know, Silicon Valley style. And you were like, you know, what problem do you really want to solve? What what topic, what industry are you really passionate about? And you were like, there was a cup on the table. I remember we were drinking, we were drinking water, a pa little paper cup. We were at this burrito place. And you were like, if, uh, if I could buy this cup for five cents and sell it to you for seven cents, that's my passion. Like, uh, I like to buy things and sell things for a little bit more. And I'm basically an internet marketer and I don't care if it's cups or dog ramps or soap opera spoilers. It doesn't matter to me. I love the process of like business and selling things. And I was like, that's amazing. Uh, you know, I love the, the sort of self-awareness and honesty. And then when you were testing ideas for, for before you created the soap opera site, you went on Facebook and if I remember correctly, you basically made like 30 fan pages or something like that. Cause at the time you could promote a page, a fan page on Facebook for like cents. You could go get a bunch of likes of your Facebook page and a lot of likes weren't worth too much, but you could kind of test what topics are people most engaged with? What, what topics, if I post content in this page, will I get a bunch of likes for? And I think it ended up being like the top three were something like, what was it? It was like, right-wing politics, uh, like soap operas. And what was the last one? It was like uh, wrestling or something like that. Yeah, wrestling was really popular. Soap opera was very, uh, soaps and uh, politics. Uh, wrestling and uh, cars were also pretty pretty high up. Right. Um, and then you were like, you know, I, I hate politics. I don't want to do politics. What's the next best one? Soap operas? Okay, great. Uh, hire this woman in the Midwest to write uh, blogs every day about soap operas and then drive traffic, baby. Uh, sell, yeah. Let's go sell some paper cups. Exactly. And I just didn't really overthink it. I didn't wrote a business plan. I just like go on, went on Upwork.com. Hey, looking for a writer that can write soap opera spoilers. Put a very simple blog up just to test to see would people go from Facebook onto a blog and write a story? And that's how it basically started. And then, you know, started with 10 cents a day from making from Google AdSense and then a dollar a day and then $10. And that's how it grew. Right. Okay. Let's look at a couple more deals and then we'll, we'll, we'll jump around again. So give me, give me another one that you saw before you came on the pod that, that you want to talk about. Yeah. So this, this is one I just saw uh, an hour ago. I just thought I was interested interesting it's a goat milk soap website goat they sell milk goat soap milk what the heck is soap. that <laughs> yes so apparently uh goat milk soap is better for the environment uh and it's better for they say it's cruelty free uh because apparently a lot of soaps the traditional soaps they do testing on animals etc uh, so they claim, and uh, like, forgive me for people that, you know, know about goat milk soap. I, this is the first time I heard about it. And that's why I, uh, that intrigued me. Um, but th this could probably be a product that people that use this are very passionate about it. Same, like, you know, people that are into keto are super passionate, uh, or, you know, there's tons of these examples where it's a pretty small niche, but people are so passionate that they, they will spread the word for you. Um, so this why website, you can find it on Flippa. Um, just search goat milk soap. And, and I'm looking at the listing. UK. It's, it says four years old, monthly profit, $20,000 a month. 
Uh, it's got a 29% profit margin and it's selling at a 1.8x multiple, right? So, okay, so what is that? So let's say 20 times 12. We don't do public math, but we do type things in. 240, 240 times 1.8. So it's selling for 400 something thousand. Is that right? Correct. 400, 425 is the asking price. Right. Okay, amazing. So walk me through. How do you think about something like this? Yeah. So first, um, I look at... I will do a little bit of research about the product. Uh, does goat milk really work? Is it more of an uh, more of a gimmick, or is it actually solve a problem? Or are people really, you know, interested? Is there a need for this? Um, and again, if it's a gimmick, that's fine too, right? I'm, this is not like an oh, the answer is no, we'll not buy it. Uh, it's just important to know. Right. Um, Back to the, to how the many, pinata example. <laughs> exactly. Um, how many? Because not, it's very important too for like not all bit ideas have to be a hundred million dollar idea. Like I think um, a, a million dollar a year business is amazing as well, uh, right? So uh, maybe goat milk soap is you know um, a very passion and niche um, product. Uh, I will look. Um, I will do research. Like okay, how many people in the U.S. search for it? Uh, you can use Google Trends or you can use uh, all kinds of um, search volume um, trackers um, that you can see how many people are searching for this keyword. I will look on Instagram. Are there like, is there a rabbit fan base, you know, like goat milk, you know, fans uh, or Facebook groups? Um, then I will also look on Amazon. Is this sold on Amazon? If yes, how is the trend and what is the sales? And then you can use a tool called Helium 10 to see how many, uh, how much revenue a listing is doing. It's, by the way, a really amazing tool uh, to do research. I do the same for pet products. You know, I look what is trending on Amazon, um, what is, you know, blowing out of water as far as sales, and then I will do research if we should also start selling that. Um, then I look, of course, on the business stuff, like business, um, is, the, is the trend up or down or flat? Um, and also, like, most of the business I bought were either flat or down, because that's how, you know, you get, you know, a good deal. Uh, so even if it's flat, even if it's not trending up, I still would, you know, potentially buy it. Uh, what is important are the traffic channels diversified. Is 100 or 90% coming from just Facebook or is it just emails or is it just um, SEO? That could be a little bit, you know, risky, uh, especially if it's all paid traffic from Facebook uh, because all the e-commerce founders or listeners uh, on this podcast will know, you know, Apple can make an update and suddenly, you know, the paid uh, traffic landscape changed. Um, so I'm, I'm looking for diversified channels. Then, of course, I look at revenue, profit margins. So you can really calculate like, okay, if I pump, is this going to be more of a skill where I can pump more money into Facebook? I put a dollar in, I get $3 back. Or is this more like of a long-term play where I have to create SEO content? Um, that, you know, is less costly, but it's a longer game. Um, and then also what's important to understand what you're buying um, are the trademarks, are the patents, is there email subscribers? So in this case, they have a 43,000 email subscribers. There's 33,000 SMS uh, subscribers. Um, I think there's a social media all these things, um, in my opinion, are valuable because that's the same with when I bought Alphapaw. They had a huge Instagram following, a huge Facebook following. They had an email list. They had trademarks and patents. All that was, you know, uh, included in the sale. Um, and, and if you, th those are great. Those are the assets.